three matches. Just three matches. And if there's anything NXT can prove to the main roster, be it Raw or SmackDown, is that a lot of times, less is more. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your February 22nd NXT review. And like I said in the opening, um, really, really simple show tonight. Knew going in that we were going to get a triple threat match for the number one contendership for the women's championship, which is all good. Um, and that was basically it. Um, a lot of scuttlebutt about Cassius Ono returning, but... Uh, Start off the show with a promo for Ember Moon versus Peyton Royce versus Liv Morgan for the number one contendership, which the way they present it, they they do a video package as if it's going to be the main event of the night, but it's actually how we start off the damn show. Really disappointed that Nikki Cross is not involved in this scenario, but um, again, I went into this thinking that this was the number one contendership for uh, the takeover before WrestleMania find out later on that it's not so I'm not not too heartbroken either way triple threat match which means Peyton Royce can have Billy Kay in her corner which is all good um, match starts kind of abruptly actually uh, boot to the face by Royce and forearms by Morgan painting reversal sequence by Royce and Morgan matrix by Morgan shining wizard by Ember Moon who hits a slingshot crossbody to the outside and eats steps thanks to Peyton Royce and Billy Kay the story for the next good portion of this match is, uh, sorry, Liv Morgan and Peyton Royce are having a one-on-one -on -one match, and anytime Ember Moon tries to get back in the ring, she gets knocked out on her ass. My thought going through for the next little bit was, if Ember Moon wins, it'll be great, because I like Ember Moon, but if she wins a match that she's hardly in, that's kind of going to be a piss-off, isn't it? It makes you think of uh, Roman Reigns winning the Royal Rumble when he was removed shortly after the rumble started, but uh, she eats steps on the outside. She's out for quite a bit other than the occasional attempt to get back in the rig. Mudhole by Royce, corner choke stems and a snapmare by Royce trades a lot of pinfall attempts with Morgan. Modified tarantula by Royce in the in the ropes. Um, don't know what's called it other than a modified tarantula, but it's basically a full Nelson with her legs using the ropes and they trade punches with Morgan as we go on boot and a head scissor by Morgan kitchen sink by Royce double stomp and a bulldog by Morgan which would have gotten the win Ember Moon very briefly back in to break up the pinfall awesome tilt a whirl head scissor by Morgan on Moon Tower of Doom sequence and it's not even a typical Tower of Doom sequence you got Ember Moon on the outside you've got Peyton Royce trying to hit a second rope suplex on Liv Morgan Ember Moon hits a slingshot sunset, sunset flip Batista bomb on Peyton Royce off the second turnbuckle, who takes Liv Morgan off the top turnbuckle in a suplex. Probably one of the better Tower of Doom suplexes, or sorry, Tower of Doom sequences I've ever seen, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Kay gets involved and she eats an eclipse, but she's tossed out by more, sorry, Billy Kay gets involved, she gets an eclipse from Ember Moon. Morgan tosses out Moon, but a perfect plex by Peyton Royce that they called something else that I don't remember, I'm sorry, gets the win for Peyton Royce, which is your tip of the hat to the fact that this is not the number one contendership for TakeOver. We see a promo that Cassius Ono is coming back soon, and then we see a video package on Pete Dunne and Mark Andrews from the, uh, the UK tournament. You guys know. I did not review the UK tournament. I watched it. It was fun enough. Pete Dunne um, really ran amok in that tournament, beating down people before, during, and after their matches, and before, during, and after each particular show. Mark Andrews was an interesting one. As, uh, as I could say with TJ Perkins in the Cruiserweight Classic, you know, here's a guy that I used to watch in TNA. Mark Andrews, or Mandrews, that they called him in TNA, teaming up with Rockstar Spud for the most part, was a bit of a joke in the in the UK tournament, he looked pretty damn good, and the crowd got behind him a lot. But Pete Dunne is, is the quintessential, stereotypical, almost William Regal-like villain. Not just a bad guy, not just a heel. He, he fits that mold of it, an actual villain. So these guys go at it. I really like that in this set of tapings, we're getting the UK division. I know Trent Seven and Tyler Bate fought last week, I will say. Didn't do an NXT review last week. Uh, cards on the table, I'm doing a lot of overtime at work, and I'm renovating a bathroom in my house, so something had to give. 
But Pete Dunn takes on Mark Andrews to represent the UK division, collar and elbow type, and Dunn works the arm and the hand, separating the fingers, separating the thumbs, stomping the hands, etc. Arm drags by Andrews, drop kick, and an apron moonsault, and an arm drag off the, an arm drag out of the moonsault, <laughs> which. Uh, in the very narrow space between the ring and, and the uh, and the crowd was a pretty decent looking. So I've never really seen that before. Moonsault, you land on the guy's shoulder, you turn that immediately into an arm drag. It's nice. Uh, key lock arm bar combination by Dunn, who turns it into a headlock. Dunn stomps the hands. Inseguri by Andrews. Forearm by Dunn, who stomps the hands on the steps. We're working the hands, we're working the arms. It's fucking wonderful. Toss suplex on the apron by Dunn. Uh, surfboard stretch, roll through double stomp by Andrews. Head scissor on a running shooting star press by Andrews. X-plex by Dunn, Insiguri by Andrews, Insiguri by Dunn. Love that, you guys know I love that. Anything you can do, I can do better. You can hit me with an Insiguri, I can hit you with an Insiguri. Uh, reverse Hurricane Rana, which I believe is called a Poisoned Rana. Somebody correct me down in the box below if I'm wrong. And the Stun Dog Millionaire, which is a stupid name for a move, but it's nice nonetheless. But the bitter end for Dunn gets the win. And this is a this is a good bit of business right here. They made a point of pointing out, as I said, the uh, the villainous tactics of of Pete Dunn, the you know the the, the scrappy underdog style of, of Mark Andrews, and the fact that Pete Dunn has a William Regal Daniel. Daniel Bryan technicality to him was brought out by Nigel McGuinness. Nigel McGuinness is doing a crackerjack job on commentary. I was really, it was kind of bummed out because of uh, Corey Graves leaving NXT, especially because he's leaving to go do Raw. I mean, yeah, he does 205 Live, which is good enough. You got Corey Graves and Mauro Ronaldo. That's a great team. Corey Graves on Raw is a demotion for Corey Graves, let's be real. But I will say, especially now that they're doing these matches from the UK tournament on NXT, having Nigel McGuinness there is a nice, neat little twist. Percy Watson can fuck off. Percy Watson falls into the same category as David Otunga and Byron Saxton. They can go commentate a funeral. I'm just saying. We get a few announcements for next week. Next week looks like it's going to be a loaded show. Peyton Royce's title shot against Asuka is next week, and also DIY's last opportunity at the Authors of Pain and the Tag Team Championships will come next week as well. Next week is looking like it's going to be a pretty damn good show. Bobby Roode, the glorious NXT champion, takes on... No Way Jose. Why? He's not a main eventer. Bobby Roode is a main eventer. Bobby Roode deserves to be main eventing with guys like Samoa Joe, with guys like Finn Balor, with guys like Kevin Owens, with guys like Shinsuke Nakamura, with guys like uh, somebody who we're going to talk about in a minute. No Way Jose is, is tall Kalisto with an afro. Or not tall Kalisto, tall uh, Santino with an afro. It, it's just bad. And they try to make him serious, and it's bad. He's he's borderline Rich Swan, but I'd rather watch Rich Swan. Is, is the honest truth. Ho no way, Jose starts the match dancing like an idiot, and he immediately walks into a headlock by Rude. Collar and elbow tie up. Rude works on the arm and chops by Jose. Trip by Jose, who dances like an idiot. Some more spine buster by Rude and a top rope shot to the neck, which is weird and different. Big like downward forearm to the back of the neck. Nasty looking, but kind of awkward looking as well. Choke on the ropes by Rude and a mud hole stomp. The one punch knockdown and a snap suplex by Rude. Rude rides a headlock and he eats a back elbow by Jose. Boot by Rude. That stupid baseball punch by Jose. But the glorious DDT gets the win for Rude. Fuck off. No way, Jose. Nobody wants you. Rude comes back after the match, chops the knee, locks that chopped knee in the one-legged crab that he fucked up Nakamura with uh, back at the pay-per-view. I forgot to say, they did mention Nakamura is getting better every day. He's back in the performance center. He's working on he's working on his cardio. He's working on his strikes. He's testing out the, the injured knee, doing some kickboxing with the heavy bag and all that bullshit. Basically, they're showing a clip from his Instagram every week, which is wonderful, I guess. But while Rude is beating the crap out of No Way Jose and making this the best show ever, Cassius Ono returns and chases Rudolph to huge welcome back chance and huge well, um, huge no, uh, not no way. Oh no, chance. Nobody's chanting for no way, Jose. Oh no, not no way. I don't know. The chants at full sale are odd sometimes. 
he comes back. He basically talks about how he's been at NXT before. He's got unfinished business. He's here for the championship. And uh, he says, you know, you've got what I need. And as soon as he says, you've, uh, Bobby Roode, you've got what I need, the entire Full Sail crowd starts singing <laughs> Just a Friend because the chorus is, you got what I need. Um, it's awkward. It doesn't really fit. It's kind of a love song um, between Ono and Rude, and I really question the full sail crowd sometimes. Uh, Rude comes in, pretends to accept the challenge, says, all right, you know what, you're in your street clothes, but I'm a fighting champion. I'll fight you right now. Why don't you take your coat off? Chop block, crab, beats up on his leg. Ono gets back up, crazy forearms to Rude's face, and eventually tosses him out of the ring and out of the arena, presumably because he runs up the ramp like a good heel does. Cassius Ono has returned. Cool. It's always interesting to see Cassius Ono if you think back to the CM Punk interview that um, that was done with oh what the fuck was the guy's name I don't know the guy the guy with the friggin podcast that I don't really know or care about other than the CM Punk interview but when he talks about the story of the uh, incarnation of the Shield how the Shield was originally supposed to be Dean Ambrose Seth Rollins and Cassius Ono not Roman Reigns so um, that always kind of makes me smile. Speaking of CM Punk, and I'm gonna, that's that's it for NXT. I am gonna talk about the uh, the prank call made by The Rock at the Staples Center on Raw after the cameras went off the air. Now there's a bunch of there's a bunch of things I would say about WWE. WWE are petty as shit. Um, Stephanie McMahon going out to cut a promo right after CM Punk's first uh, uh, MMA match, which was a gigantic flop, as we all know. But um, the, uh, the commentators several times on Raw making jokes about it being clobbering time, the New Day picking up the CM Punk ice cream bar gimmick, and not only, not only did we see a really bad fake AJ Lee after the cameras went off the air, because they're doing that stupid page movie that's being produced by The Rock and all that sort of thing, so we brought out a really lame knockoff AJ Lee, which is apparently Rosita, again from TNA, so that's bad. The crowd reacted because they didn't know what the hell was going on, they thought AJ Lee was back, which is a stupid troll for the crowd, and then when we're done shitting on AJ Lee, we shit on CM Punk with the friggin' uh, with the friggin' prank call gimmick, CM Punk responded like an absolute champ uh, on Twitter about that when he said, you know, Stable Center, thanks for all the love. Sorry I couldn't answer the rock. I was busy walking my dog, which is fucking wonderful. And then you had the, you know, fake Page and fake AJ Lee, and it's just makes, I know that they're there, I know that they're there because they're doing the Page movie, and that's fine, and I'm not really knocking Rosita, except I really am, if any of you have seen the pictures. Um, but it's just, you know, you bring out the fake AJ Lee, you troll the crowd, and then you fucking troll CM Punk after the clobbering time and the ice cream bars and the friggin' WWE as a whole. I know CM Punk doesn't care, and I know nobody else really cares either. I know the CM Punk chants at WWE events get really old, but WWE is really super fucking petty sometimes, and it is absolutely fitting that this happened at a Monday Night Raw. That's all I really have to say about that. I find it hilarious, but at the same time, I find it very, very sad. Anyways, that's my NXT review for this week. Um, now that I've gone on that little extra diatribe, I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I am tagging out. Bye, guys. Sunshine, come and freak like me.